I know this is not exciting, but Beverly and I are using our pump out facility for the. It's a sh morning, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's just happened, Bev? Well, we just had a bit of a moment. Um, we were over pressed for seal and we just needed to put the engine on for a few minutes and it wouldn't start. <laughs> Daisy. Oi, don't touch. Through Belfast Lock. Look at those. They're great. <laughs> Plenty of tacking. Lots of tacking. Hopefully this will be okay. Can I hear a moose? No. She's just put it in, um, she's put it into neutral. No, no, you heard the propeller. It's because I put the gearbox back to neutral so it could start the engine. Yeah, well she started again. Right, So well, let her warm. So we're fine. Well, we're in Banger. And we're going to have, what are we going to have, Bev? We're going to have bangers and bangers. Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash. So Bev's uh, done the mashed potatoes in Mr. D. She just um, warms the peas up uh, with boiling water. Yes. And in there... We have got the sausages and, um, the onion gravy. and the onion gravy, but we had to have, what did we have to have, Karen? Come on. That's wine. That's red. I know, and mash. bangers and mash. <laughs> oh, well, there it is, bangers and mash. And of course, as Karen says, we've got a glass of wine to go with it. One of the things we noticed in Banger was the sign of a steam train. Sadly, the reality was a bit of a disappointment. Casey Jones and the Cannonball Express, it wasn't. Today we're in Bangor and it's blowing a hoolie. It certainly is. We've been here for four days. And it looks like we could be here for five days because it was supposed to stop. But it hasn't. It's still blowing away. There's white caps on the water. So... What are we going to do? This is the deck swabby. What's a deck swabby? You'll find out. <laughs> this is a walk round Belfast Lock. We actually, the boat is actually in Bangor. It's a lovely path and the views are spectacular. Some lovely houses up there where people have got a sea view. I'm so envious. And here's Gaynor. Losing, uh, slowly losing weight. Well, she's got to stop eating, I keep telling her. <laughs> I do not want to stop eating. You're food. eating too much, Gaynor. I love my food. I'm always going to eat my food. Yes, well, okay. But we're using it for the very, very first time. And, um, you know, but the thing is, this is exactly what it's there for. So that when we're in the Mediterranean, <laughs> we can you always hope. It's working any well? Or? We can always hope. Uh, well, we well, it feels like something's coming up. Well. But yeah, it's vibrating. So. Uh, so we're hopeful that it will all work. I have to tell you, please turn off for this bit if you don't want to see anything really horrible. Oh, you're not going to shove a knife under the sewage tank, are you? Of course not, but anyway, uh, please turn off if you don't want to see anything. Or Beverly will just um, show you a blank screen. But uh, let's go see if it's worked. Uh, yeah, that looks like it has worked. So what's just happened, Bev? Well, we just had a bit of a moment. Um, we were over pressed for seal and we just needed to put the engine on for a few minutes and it wouldn't start. Uh, we've had some trouble with the starter battery for a while and we suspect it's just gone beyond. So when we get into Abercorn Basin today, it's going to be the battery change we were putting off. It just has to be done. <sighs> well, we're still messing about in Belfast Lock. Why are we messing about, girl, Karen? Because 
because we're having a sail and because we've been stuck in Bangor for about five days because of the winds, it was just far too windy. So we were going to go over to, well, we were either going to go down Ireland or up Ireland or across to the Isle of Man, but it's just too rough in the Irish Sea. So we're heading to Belfast. Yeah, because um, the thing is about Belfast Lock is it's quite sheltered and although uh, it'll be quite rough out in the uh, Irish Sea. It's not right here, isn't it, Karen? Well, we've had, um, it was a bit rough. Well, it, the wind's been good and we dropped a reef in. So, and we pulled the Genoa in, um, reefing the Genoa. So now we've released the Genoa. Um, yeah, so Jenny's back sail, out again. Full sail. Um, and we were talking about putting the Genoa back up to the top and we thought, oh shit, it's too much like hard work, so <laughs> You're talking about the main. The main, yeah, sorry, the main. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you've released the Genoa. Yeah. So what are we doing uh, currently, Bev? Uh, Sunbathing. <laughs> no, see, we're doing four knots. Four knots, oh, that's not too bad then. Might yeah. have to strip off because it's well, getting too hot. We, um... <laughs> oh no, we're not going to strip again. <laughs> when, when, we were, when we were very close holes earlier, we were doing seven to seven and a half. Yeah, she does. Our, our, our boat does does like to be close all, doesn't she, Bev? She doesn't mind it in the slightest. Yeah. So are we now? Uh, what hauling are we on now? Beam reach or? We're still close haul. We're still yeah. close haul, but just... basically the wind is coming. The wind has been shaped by the hills here, so uh, you've got the Knockbreed uh, Hills to the south. You've got the uh, Knocker Hills to the north, and the wind is just whistling up between the two. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, anyway. We're still messing about in Belfast lot, but it's a lovely day for it. It's a lovely day for it. But I'm gonna see those sails because I do love to see them even though they're not working as hard as they were. So we're in Abercorn Basin in Belfast now and it's all looking rather posh. Northern Ireland is definitely the place of the deals in the marinas. Um, like here it's, how much is it? £17? Pounds? £18. £18 pounds per night. Um, and uh, at Carrick you get, you pay for one night and you get one night free. Same so, for Glenarm? Same at Glenarm. Um, mm. So, you know, the costs of uh, cruising in Northern Ireland is a lot lower than the cost of... Um, cruising in Scotland. Scotland. We changed into our glad rags and then we hit Belfast. Apparently this rum is £17 a shot. But I do love the bottle. Yeah. Lord Nelson's rum. £23.25. All right. Oh! oh. Video chatting. <laughs> right. Tell me, tell me about it. Well, I am highly tempted, but I have to tell you, it is a really nice um, uh, cider from Ireland. Uh, lovely taste, and uh, I, um, I think it's great. And then it was time to dance. <laughs> Beverly and I uh, bought um, a banger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Beverly and I bought a battery in Banger, um, but we didn't have time to uh, fit it before our friend uh, Karen arrived. Uh, so we thought, well, we've got the spare battery, we've at least got it. Um, and we weren't having an issue with the uh, starter um, uh, battery. But then when we were coming down here to Abercrombie Basin, oh, it just uh, stopped, didn't it? And it just wouldn't start again. We couldn't get the engine to start. Uh, and all it was was we wanted a little bit of extra power because we were going to just bring down the um, 
sale a little bit. Yeah, so we jumped the house battery. So we jumped the house battery. Uh, we got it all sorted, uh, but we then, even though we sailed all the way down to <laughs> Abercrombie Basin, um, Abercorn Basin. Abercorn, Abercorn Basin. Um, you know, we still kept the engine going just in case we had that issue again. So um, um, our friend has gone off. She's gone off to explore sunny Belfast. And um, Bev and I are stuck in the boat getting the battery sorted at last. With our new battery, um, the positive terminal is here and the negative terminal is um there on our old battery that's the negative and that's the positive so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put the uh, the um battery in the opposite way round and stretch the cables this panel here shows the fitting date and as you can see whoever put it in did not bother marking the fitting date so we have no idea how old this battery is yeah and that's the issue. Um, you need to be able to know that information. Right. So the year has a nine in it. And it was July. But I will also write on it. July 2001. When Bev and I are um, doing jobs like this, sometimes I feel like a surgeon's mate as she hands out edicts, ratchet, sandpaper, screwdriver. Scissors, clamps, scalpel. <laughs> How's the patient doing down there? I hope to goodness it's working. Do we have power yet? Oh no!